Okay, so I've been out for a field trip, uh, doing a field trip to the National Art Educators Association Convention. It was in Seattle. Long plane ride. So today's uh, today's video is going to be over one of the classes I went to. One of the classes I went to was over escape rooms, using an escape room inside of the classroom. And uh, wonderful teachers, these guys were out of New York. So I want you guys to take what they did and see how you can kind of apply it to your classroom. What else? What other fun aspects you guys can use this? Really cool topic on using the escape room. Now they use it as a art history tutorial on how they were going to um, use it as a study guide prior to their test. Great idea. I loved it and I uh, just want to see what you guys think about it. Students are super excited. They love the idea of doing an interactive activity that's an escape room because they've heard about it, they've seen it, and they may not have done one before. Um, so they find this really exciting and they follow the directions. Okay, I have to do a quick editor's note because I didn't say this before. All right, so the class that I went to was Educational Escape, Escape Rooms for the Art Room. The teachers were Daniel Lynch and Tina Edholm McNillis. An opportunity to learn about the process of creating an, your own escape room in this fun and gay hands-on workshop by participating in one yourself. Definitely would give a huge shout out to them. Um, it was just, it was a wonderful uh, experience, wonderful conference, wonderful um, class. Uh, so this is the cards that they will receive. I'll go over each of those roles in a second. Um, so one student in the group will be a manager, somebody will be a locksmith, a reader, an agent, a timekeeper. Again, I'll explain what those mean. And then they'll find their colored group. So that will be labeled either at their table or whatever station they're at. This is what they are going to find on their desk. Um, so they're going to find two boxes. They're going to find a bag, and all three of those things are going to be locked. And then there's going to be a bunch of various materials that they have no idea what it is for. Um, but they're about to find out, and so will you. Um, so also to touch, um, there is on the desk right here, uh, this is an explanation of all the uh, roles. So if they end up in a group that has less than five students, so if all five roles are not taken care of, um, there is a way to modify it so three students, four students, six students, even seven students can do it. Um, and I'll touch on that in a second. All right, so their goal. Uh, their goal is to be the first group to solve all of the clues and then open the final box. Uh, so what we do, we have one final box, which is at the top of our stack, uh, that has a very different lock than the rest of them, but their goal is to open that one first. Um, we do not end it when the first group opens it. We keep it going. So that group that opened it first, they get to walk around the room and see what everybody else is doing, while the rest of the groups continue to hit that goal. So that way, everybody is learning all the way through. So rule number one we give our students, uh, they must work together as a team, and they have to know their role. Um, so building into our Kagan, strat or Kagan strategies, um, they have to cooperate, they have to work together in order to accomplish this task. Uh, and that was one of our biggest things in creating this. Um, so the roles that we created make sure that every student is actively engaged. So the manager of the group uh, is going to be the person that organizes the uh, group and the materials. Uh, the locksmith is going to be the person that works the group's locks. Uh, this really helps simplify things because then that person is like super protective of the locks and they're not going to reset them on us. Uh, then we have the reader. Uh, the, this person reads all of the clues and the directions aloud. Uh, the agent checks work for accuracy and details. And then the timekeeper watches the clock and keeps the group on task. So they are timekeeper and cheerleader. <laughs> Uh, continuing with the rules, rule number two, you may use electronic devices, no other materials can be used. Uh, so in our schools, uh, we are one-to-one -one Chromebooks, so our students will be able to use their Chromebooks. At the high school level, our students are also allowed to have their cell phones in place. Steal ideas from other groups, um, so they are very close in proximity, but they take it very seriously, so they're whispering to each other and keeping very quiet because they want to find out what's in that final box. Uh, number four, do not play with the locks or boxes. So the boxes that we purchase are just from a dollar store. Uh, they can be opened without unlocking the lock. Uh, Very secure. <laughs> they, uh, yes. Um, so we make sure that our students do not do that. <laughs> it's all for look. Um, so we go over that and we make sure that our students do not do that. Uh, we also ask our students that once a lock is unlocked that they just carefully put it back inside the box. Uh, we did find out the hard way once that the locks, not too easily, but easily reset. Uh, especially if you have a smart student that likes to play with stuff. Um, and then we just had locks that we could not reset, so we had to purchase new ones. Um, 
So yeah. Number five, you must work on a clue for at least five minutes before asking for a hint. Uh, we've done this a number of ways. You will receive a three minute penalty. This is my favorite rule and I have yet to have been able to do it. Uh, but <laughs> we would go over and just take everything off their desk and they have to sit there and watch everybody else have fun while they, while they sit there for three minutes. Um, but we think this is important because you know, these are still rules, we're still in a structured environment, so rules are really important. First lock that they will encounter is the one that's up on the screen. Um, so in the end, when I go over all the materials that you would need to purchase, this is the only lock that you have to purchase in order to make this escape activity work, uh, just because of the colors that are involved. Um, so on this one, there is a triangle. They have to line up their four number combination underneath that triangle in order to open that lock and open the bag. Uh, box number one and box number two are both similar. They just do not have the color coding on it. So this you can replace with any four number combination lock um, that you can find out there. Uh, some are expensive, some are super cheap. Ours were pretty cheap. Uh, and then the final box, this is the only letter lock. Um, so there is a red line along it and they have to line up their four letter combination uh, in order to open the final box. Then we ask our students if they have any questions. Uh, they typically do not because they just want to dive into the locks and the boxes. Uh, and then we allow them 30 minutes. So in our classrooms, we have 42 minutes um, with our students. Uh, so we expect about 12 minutes of presentation uh, and cleanup and reflection at the end. Uh, so 30 minutes are spent on the escape. If a student or a group does not escape, uh, that time at the end allows us to go over what they did not accomplish. So that way they're still getting the review, they're still getting the content. But we do a 10 second countdown, um, super cheesy, super fun. Uh, the students are all on edge, ready to break into everything in front of them. The second zero hits, then we go to our timer that counts down uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so what we're going to do now, uh, since we can't allow you to do your own escape room right now, uh, we're going to go through each of the clues within the set that we're going to give you today. Uh, and this is where the interaction is going to come in with the Remind text. All right. So, like we said, when they come in, there's a whole pile of materials. You guys are getting the benefit of knowing what is exactly for clue number one. However, the students would not know that. They would just have to look at everything and kind of figure out what goes with what and kind of go from there. So, I'm asking you, the interactive part right here, is to solve this clue and then text us the answer to that group that you just joined at the beginning of the thing. So, if you can figure out what the solution is to this because it's hard to tell on this slide. The, the colors on the colors here match here. So so black and white makes gray. So that's there's seven of those. So that's on the pink. So that's seven. Okay. So red and yellow make orange. There's eight of those. That's on the purple part, so that's the purple lock. Okay, so that's 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 it. Again, it's a little easier when it is tangible and in front of you, um, and really the students do get it, which I know it seems a little bit vague when you're kind of looking up here and seeing it. But um, so then that will open the first clip or the first bag. Sorry. Okay. So in the first bag. All right. So going back to that one real quick. That's why that lock is so important because the colors have to match up to that lock find another lock with those colors, great. And you can always change them and make your own too. Uh, so what's inside of that bag? These two things are what you are going to find. So one is clue number two, and the next you have a letter uh, written to Igor from Mona. Um, but we'll get to the letter in a second. Again, students aren't going to know the connection of these things. They're going to have to figure it out on their own, but we're just hand feeding this all to you right now. So let's break it down. Uh, so clue number two, um, if I go back and read, it says, using the artwork cards, find artwork that best illustrates the elements of art below. Once you think you have found them, or found the correct answers, use the letter from Mona to help you put them in the right order. Unlock box number one to receive your next clue. Good luck. And then it was contour line, organic shape, cool colors, uh, and geometric shape. So on their desks when they walked in, there were these eight cards, uh, and each of them had a number on them. So here is your goal. So using the eight artwork cards, which four pieces of artwork best illustrate the terms below, text the four corresponding numbers to us. So whichever number you think best illustrates contour line, organic shape, cool colors, and warm colors, text those four numbers to us. Doesn't matter what order. Right now it doesn't matter because we don't have the letter yet. You could go over with your students prior. Uh, so in teaching the elements of arts, you could 
use our slides for fine with that. Um, so in this, you'll notice as we go over line everything, there is Igor Stravinsky and it gives you the title to it. So our students need that QR code in order to re-enter this um, slide presentation so they see Igor Stravinsky. Um, so they see the red flowers, they'll see Starry Night, they'll see absolutely everything. Um, so you can utilize this uh, prior to, so you have the content. Awesome. And then one, you open two blocks. Um, this is the next one. So which element of art is being referenced by this riddle? So we'll go ahead and you guys can start texting that to us. So that riddle is actual or implied. There's no place for me to hide. I'm around you all the time. Just feel around to find. So they would <clears throat> be looking at, uh, they know that the seven elements of art that we use. I know there's some variations around <laughs> the world here. Um, but so we, they are familiar with those seven, so they would have to solve that, that riddle. So go ahead and do your best to solve that riddle. Okay. You can text, text us your element. Text us your element that you think that describes. All of the questions for um, the crossword puzzle are all based on the elements of art. So we talk about color, implied line, actual line, texture, space, form, everything. Um, but if you look carefully at the crossword puzzle, there's only really four answers that they need. Um, as long as they catch that hint, they only need to focus on the answers to the four colors. They never do. Um, <laughs> they always end They're up so filling excited. out the entire thing. Um, so looking at our final box, um, students have absolutely no idea unless they are really paying attention. Uh, but there are four colors listed on that box that match what's in the crossword puzzle. Um, so the combination to this, once they fill out the crossword puzzle, they'll get four letters, and then that's the correct order on the final box. Um, so again, the QR code is going to help them, is all the assistance. It's not really giving them the answers, but they have to search through the slides and everything that they remember learning before to get the correct answers, and sometimes the correct spelling. Um, so that will open the final box. And there's the final box, so in this case the code is N-A-C-R. All right, so inside the box, the final box, make sure you include prizes. Um, if there's nothing in there, uh, that would really be a downer. Uh, so what we have recently started doing, um, this is actually the first time, if we were doing this with you guys, inside your box, if you won, uh, you would have gotten a sticker that says, I escaped, um, which we think our students would love just wearing that around as a badge, like, I did it. Um, but we also put candy in there, we put uh, pencils, we've done extra credit. When we do this with staff development, um, we always ask the principal that we are running this for to provide the prizes. So we've seen, like, Tim, Hort uh, Tim Hortons gift cards, if you want to Tim coffee. Hortons, coffee, coffee stuff. Um, not as good as Starbucks. Um, but yeah, lots of, uh, yeah, lots of different prizes. Whatever you use in your classroom will work. Uh, just something small. All right, uh, so now I'm going to take you to the file that I'm going to give you and just explain it to you. I'm not going to give you the link until the end because I'm going to trap you here until the end. We'd be super happy. Um, but yeah, reach out to us. We would love to help. And I mean, if your district really wants to fly us out, we'd do that too. Um, but it's a lot of fun. So yeah, we'll be more than happy to share it with you. Yeah. first group one shot if they open it great they can take their prize if not the first group gets to go not that there's any higher hierarchy prizes inside of there ever um, but it's it's a good way to keep the students moving so guys i hope you got something out of that as much as i did that was a very cool topic very cool thing to discuss how do you use this game inside the classroom that's something that most people don't think about oh, please like subscribe share on all the different platforms